Uh, okay, this is Shigeru Shimamoto. I'm from Tokyo, Japan. Uh, most of the people know we had a huge earthquake uh, March 11, 2011. We had a huge earthquake hit the east coast of Japan. And we had a tsunami and also nuclear power explosion and Fukushima nuclear power plants. So based upon such experience of having such a disaster and uh, bad things, uh, we have learned a lot of things. Uh, one thing is the uh, losing the electric power was the biggest issues of the uh, life of the students. So we have to uh, recover the electricity as soon as possible. But to do this, a current system is sometimes some, some difficulty to recover very quickly. So we have to generate the power every place, like houses, cars. So the Japanese government began to promote the solar panel house and also electric vehicle. They have the distributed manner produce of the energy uh, by fuel, so uh, solar panel and something like this. And also, uh, they ask for the communication. At the beginning of the uh, disaster, everybody wants to find out their families and friends and where they are and also the, uh, live or dead. So, but it is very difficult for the student at that time uh, to communicate because all mobile phone, base station collapse, and also terrestrial communication was disconnected. So uh, we need to provide some of the uh, uh, new system to tell the people uh, the locations and also uh, whether it, uh, the person is alive or dead, some vital information. So that is why I'm pro uh, proposing the systems of uh, missing people detection by UAV. UAV is Amman area vehicle. So we, uh, in, the, in the system, uh, the disaster situations, we fly the such a way to find the people, missing people, and also uh, get the information from the uh, such missing people whether uh, this person is alive or dead, something like this. So in the future, uh, in Japan, everybody uh, could do such kind of risk watch, have such transforming uh, functions. Uh, whether this person is alive or dead, also the locations. So in the future, we like to have such kind of system to find missing people. Maybe uh, the, uh, the mother like to have this kind of watch for their children. And also the uh, electricity, and uh, there are so many things we have to figure out. The other thing we have to figure out is interoperability between the operators. Because uh, in the disaster, uh, the base station was damaged, but uh, very few uh, base station was alive. But uh, in Japan, the people have some contact, exclusive contact to the operators. So if uh, A operator's cell phone can't communicate with B cell phone, the base stations. But in such uh, dangerous situations, everybody should communicate. So. Uh, in such situations, the, the uh, operator should open the window for all customers belonging to other operators too. And that should be important. And uh, also I want to mention is, uh, the, uh, currently the uh, cell size is getting smaller. Macro cell to uh, micro cell and the picto cell, femto cell, getting very smaller to have more capacity. But in the disaster situations, we should provide a wide area coverage, macro cell zone, to have communications. Because uh, all such small uh, base station collapse, we can't communicate. But the macro cell zone is uh, huge, like a 20 or 30 kilometers radius. So in such, by using such macro zone, we have some possibility to communicate. So we have to have both. The normal situation, we can introduce femtocell, uh, pickle cell, such small cell. But in the disaster situations, we have to introduce big cells. Uh, to have, just for emergency situation, maybe, because the capacity is not so high. But uh, we need to have such macro cells uh, in such situations. So that should be the uh, future uh, collaboration between the operators, also future research topics of uh, uh, such situations. Based upon experience of uh, I mean, disaster in Japan people. That is my opinion. Thank you.